This is Theater Terminology Part 1, Parts of Theater. I'm going to be following the study guide handed out in class. If you've lost it for any reason, check out the worksheet folder in the Theater Basic folder for another. If you can't print it out, be sure to have the study guide open in another application like Google Docs so you can toggle between this video and the study guide. Tomorrow in class, we will be identifying the terminology covered in our, here in our own theater. Different types of stages. The first is a proscenium arch stage. It is called this because it is framed by the proscenium arch. It creates a picture frame effect. Many theaters are proscenium, including our own. Next we have the thrust stage. Here the stage extends towards the audience and they surround three-fourths of the stage. This one looks more like a model's catwalk. Here is the arena stage. The name is the best description. The audience totally surrounds the stage much like any arena where you would see concerts, rodeos, or even football games. Next is the black box stage. This stage allows there to be a variable distance from the audience. What do I mean by variable? Well, it can be arranged in different configurations. So if one show, you might have the audience very close and around three sides, like a thrust stage, or the next, you might have them further away and only on two sides. These stages are often found at universities due to their flexible nature and can be found in many different community theaters. Finally, the rake stage. The stage has the floor tilted towards the audience. This is where the terms upstage and downstage come from. Notice where the platform is very close to the stage and where it is very far away. Now imagine having to do things like act or dance on such a stage. Moving on to parts of the stage and backstage. We start with the apron. This is the area downstage of the curtain. There are many theories as to why this is called the apron, including my favorite, which is it is in front of the main curtain, like an apron is in front of your clothing. Then there is the house. This is where the audience sits. The person in charge of the house and the ushers is called the house manager. Next is the green room. This is where the actors wait to go on stage. Our green room is our classroom, but in many theaters, they have green rooms that act as lounges for the cast and crew. Why the color green? There are many theories about it, including actors used to dress in the woods when performances were held outside. Another theory is that fans would bring flowers and plants, making it more of a greenhouse than a green room. The term backstage is a general term for all areas beyond the audience's view. This includes wings, green room, and the shops, both costume and building. Now for curtains and tech terminology. The act curtain is the main curtain. It is also called the grand drape and main curtain. It is often open and closed to signify the end of an act, hence the name. The traveler is the curtain halfway between the act curtain and the upstage wall. It is often used as a halfway point from changing upstage from downstage. It is often referred to as the mid curtain. When we get to blocking, this curtain will help you figure out that halfway point. Teasers and borders are small curtains on the top of the stage. These mask the lights and buttons above the stage. They're often called teasers and borders because you only see the bottoms of them from the audience. Tormentor legs mask the wings and backstage area. Why are they called legs? Well, they are tall, skinny, and there are typically eight of them, just like a spider. Why do we call them tormentors? They can be extremely difficult to move. Next is the scrim. Not all stages have a scrim. It is a gauze drop that can appear opaque or translucent depending on the lighting. If it is lit from behind, it becomes transparent or see-through, like the picture shown. Or if it is lit from the front, it becomes opaque or difficult to see through. The sky drop is a muslin curtain. Muslin is a type of fabric theaters use a lot of, usually in their flats. This curtain goes across the back of the stage. Another term for it is psych or cyclorama. Wings are the areas at the side of the stage. It would be visible from the audience without the curtains. The phrase waiting in the wings means to wait before coming on stage. Mask. This term has come up in a few of the slides. To mask is to hide from the audience view. This is often achieved with tormentor legs and flats. Battens are pipes on which lights and curtains are hung. Pipes that allow for electrical hookups are often called electrical battens. 
Battens are usually hooked up to a fly system. These are found in most professional theaters, mostly with proscenium stages. They are made up of lines, which are ropes, blocks, which are the pulleys, and counterweights. Sadly, very few high school theaters have fly systems due to their safety concerns. If you continue on to the theater tech class, we will go over these more. The picture on the right is what a fly system looks like on the ground floor. And this is a picture of what the fly system looks like up in the rafters. Since we do not have a fly system, we often use lifts to raise to this level to change the lights or the curtains. Finally, tech. Tech supports the activities behind the actors. This includes set building and painting, lights, sounds, props, and etc. Tech stands for technical theater, and those who work in technical theater are called technicians, not techies. This concludes this video. Please make sure you understand the terms and note which terms are still confusing. We will identify what we have in our own theater, so be prepared to move about the stage tomorrow and participate.